Fish Montana here to do a video cast on ah, shame and guilt. Shame and guilt. It's You know, it could be really heavy, but what I want to do is sort of come at it from um, a lighter perspective or from a neutral perspective is probably what I call lighter. It's not like it's going to go in and stir up your heart and make you so sad that you don't know what to do next. It's just going to say, so if this is showing up here, then this is probably what it is. So let's just dive in to the differences um, and how the differences between guilt and shame and how they show up in our parenting. Okay, so um, I want to start first with generational pain. I got I got hearts going across the screen. This is so awesome. Um, general, generational pain is the process of passing belief systems, experiences, and patterns onto our children. They're linear. They come down through the genetic um, generational lines. And if you think about it, our children sort of, they see us, they scan us, and they record, and then they play back. So they're only... Um, perspective of how to do things in the world are what they see, record, and scan. So it makes sense that if we had a grandmother or a great-grandmother who had an intense amount of anger, and that anger came into the child, and then that child was raised, you know, grew up and became a parent, and that anger passed on to the child, this is what we call generational pain. And shame is one of those. And guilt. And so what I thought I would do is just sort of Hang out with you with Brene Brown. I watched her TED Talk. Um, love Daring Greatly. Um, phenomenal book. I, I highly recommend it if you haven't read it yet. Um, guilt and shame are huge in our culture. Guilt is the action or behavior of something that you do or did. Right? It's an action. It's something that comes out of you towards yourself or to someone else or something else. Shame is a belief system. It's that inner belief system underneath it all that drives those actions. So what we want to do is when we look at how often are we feeling um, guilt, then we want to go down underneath and say, so what is the role that shame plays in my life? Okay? So shame is a disconnector. It disconnects us from ourselves and from the people that we want love and belonging and companionship from. Brene Brown said that shame is the intensely painful feeling or experience of believing that we are flawed and therefore unworthy of love and belonging. When we feel shame, we blame someone else or something else. When we feel shame, we rationalize our behavior. We offer, you know, if we get caught on it or we do something wrong, we offer an insincere apology or we think we're offering an apology, but it's really shallow and the other person can't feel it. We hide out, we retreat, we isolate, we hide. Or we get really, really busy and we focus on others and we start micromanaging them. So that's why I tied it into parenting. <laughs> Our culture uses um, shame to keep people in line. They have for years, generations, decades, centuries. We use shame to keep people in line. We make them feel like they're unworthy if they're not good. They didn't get, you know, think about our competitive sports. And we start our kids in competitive sports at age five in this country. When people are feeling disengaged as a result of shame, it leads to addiction, violence, aggression, depression, eating disorders, and bullying. Those are just a few that Renee, uh, Renee um, put in her book. And I thought that those were really interesting ones because I can tie each of those to sort of the competitive nature that we've developed in our culture and within our relationships. Shame triggers fight or flight. And, you know, we always talk about fight or flight and the adrenaline, you know, um, uh, buildup that happens in our body as a result of um, our, these triggers of fight or flight. But it's really interesting what happens. Shame shows up in three ways in fight or flight. You know, the away which is they're going to withdraw, hide, silence ourselves, uh, keep secrets, bury something, and then hold on to it. And that's where it shows up in our body as health symptoms and, and depression and anxiety and things like that. Toward. So when, you're sh when you feel shame, you go toward something, which is where we appease, placate. Um, please, you know, and, and that's me, you know, whenever I feel shame, I'm going to go make sure that the other people in the room feel so much better than I do. 
it's very codependent and it's something that's lifelong journey. The other one is against, which is to power over, become aggressive, and to shame others. These are all paths that lead to actions that promote guilt. So when we hide, we feel guilty because we can see the look of longing on our, on, on our people's, our, the people we love on their faces. When we are trying to placate and please, you know, at least I can see it in my kids, they're like, stop. Stop focusing on me and just breathe, mom. Um, against, you know, <laughs> that guilt, when you, when you lose it on a Starbucks rep or on a teacher or on someone that you love, you yell at a child, you know, it just brings up all sorts of levels of guilt. When we have moments um, when we disconnect, when we notice this disconnection and this pressure, the question is, what does that do to our children? If we're aware of it, it's got to be pervasive for a long time in our system, our body system, before it even comes to our awareness. Um, Joseph um, Chilton Pierce said, what we are teaches the child more than what we say. There it is. So we must be what we want our children to become. So when we work on this shame piece, hi Michelle, I'm so glad you're on. And Kelly, you've been texting and putting little hearts across. I love it. Thank you. Um, when we can free ourselves from some of that shame, and then we can pass it on and free our children so that they can have their own experiences and not carry our shame forward, I think that it's kind of the main point. And there's a chapter in Daring Greatly that deals with parenting and relationships and work and how we lead and everything. And it's fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. When we free our children, when we become aware of shame, we also address those expectations. You know, like, oh, you're going to wear that. Or um, let's stop eating the ice cream because you're starting to gain weight. And we start pushing all of our expectations and our own fears and our own shame onto the others in our family and then they start to adopt that and then they start to come up with these deep belief systems like I'm fat, I am not worthy, I'm not lovable, I'm not wanted, you know whatever those are those are the deep shame pieces that dialogue fill in the blank I am and then when we feel that, it starts to come up in our body. Women have a tendency to focus on conformity. They don't want to rock the boat. They want to look like they know what they're doing, but not make anybody mad. They are perfectionists. And they live in the world of shoulds. So their shame, our shame, is going to come from that place of you know, like, how do I start, how do I look like the rest of the world? How do I act like the rest of the world? How do I, and sometimes I'm looking over at this little square for some reason, it seems to be talking to me. Um, men, you know, they, they come from the fear, from a point of fear and weakness. They don't want to be perceived as weak or flimsy or, or, or not strong enough to carry anybody. They're all about participation, leadership. Um, they don't want to make mistakes and they don't want to be criticized. And they don't want to be ridiculed. So everything that a man does with shame is going to be based on, I'm worthless. I'm an ambi-pamby. I live in a world where my children and my wife criticize me all the time. And then that really makes that shame, you know, show up. So in Alan Seal's work, and you can go back and look at some of the previous videos, we've, I've done some stuff on four levels of engagement. And one of the transition pieces in the four levels is choice. And when we are aware that we are believing something and that our actions are coming out in different ways, we can choose. We get to choose um, what we want to do. We get to choose whether we step into empathy, choose whether we step into vulnerability, authenticity, connection. These are the things that are going to nullify shame. Because if shame is about disconnection, then we have to promote connection and we have to be um, vulnerable enough, honest enough, authentic enough to show up and say, here's me with all my flaws. <laughs> you know, whatever they are, my body flaws, my personality flaws, whatever. And when we can do that with empathy and vulnerability, that's when we start to, to, to neutralize and even um, uh, turn around shame into something more powerful. 
which is connection and love. So we heal with self-love, we heal with self-compassion, and then we model this to our children. So if we have the propensity towards guilt, and guilt kind of ties your stomach in knots, explore that a little bit. Go underneath that and find out what is my deepest shame? What are those things that I hold on to, those belief systems that don't work for me? And if you'd like some help doing that, let me know. I'm a coach. I work with those who parent. I work with those in relationship. Because I think that as we come into alignment with ourselves and with those we love, our world changes. And I'm all about changing this world, as most of you know. <laughs> you can find me on, Denise, at, um, on the web at denisedrydencoaching.com. Have a fabulous April 2nd, Sunday, spring <laughs> week ahead of you. And enjoy. Take care. Bye-bye.